The Suzuki Vitara first appeared back in 1988, and the one thing I remember about it, it was pretty damn angular. This is the new Suzuki Vitara, and it's hybrid. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Now the Vitara has always been a family orientated vehicle. Practical, roomy, pretty good off-road. Yes, it's not a green laner, but that raised ride height and the fact that you've got all grip means you can get a little adventurous. Now the powertrain. Well, for a start, there's two. So you've got a mild hybrid and you've got the full hybrid that we've got. There's no charging needed. Under the bonnet, you've got a 1.5 Jimny engine. There's no turbocharger. Instead, you've got an electric motor and it essentially does the same job as a turbocharger. So it gives it a bit of torque. And they've also housed it on the outside. So it gives it more torque. Even driving it around flat out, I've been getting 45 to the gallon. On an eco run, closer to 60. Now on paper, this doesn't seem quick. Not to 60 in 13.5 seconds. But when I've been driving it, it seems far quicker. Now when it comes to prices, these are great value. For a start, you can pick one up for just under 24,000. Yeah, granted, ours is closer to 31. And good news, folks, if you're interested in the Vitara, there's a sale on. You can save up to £2,750. For more information, check out cars.suzuki.co.uk. And yes, it has changed since the previous gen. For example, this is more like this as opposed to like this. There's new styling around the bezel. It's got a bigger, chunkier bumper. Yeah, the shape's the same, but they've just made far more of it. Safety-wise, well, it's fully teched out. Everything from dual sensor brake support, you've also got AEB and all manner of things. And the thing about the safety on this is the standard suite includes adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, and some other toys too. Automatic headlamps, LED, and you've got high beam assist. I do like the style of the front. For a start, you've got these LED daytime running lights. You're guaranteed to get lots of chrome, but I think it works. I mean, for a start, you've got it in the grill, and then you've got it down here. But if chrome's not your bag, baby, then you could go for something like the Urban Pack, and that will give you red accents. There's also a fair number of colours to choose from. I think there's 11 in total. 17-inch alloy wheels, and yeah, it's not a bad profile tyre, so it makes it comfortable on-road and off-road. You've got to love this cladding. Now this is an interesting addition. Also the shaping of the wings, and this harks back, like I said, to the early Vitaras. And if you just hone in on this section, you can see it. And I like the way that they brought that back and integrated it into the newer models. Keyless entry, power folding door mirrors, but they don't operate when you press the key fob. And we've also got blind spot detection. The door opens nice and wide, and immediately I can see hard plastics, but the interesting thing is the build quality is better. There's not as much flex. Padded area here and a lovely insert. Simplicity to get into. Yeah, absolutely no problem, but no grab handle. Oh, I like this leather steering wheel. I love a set of analog clocks. You just don't see them in many vehicles nowadays, but there is a little computer in the middle and that'll give you information like economy. Down here, engine start, stop, and we've got some shortcut buttons, descent control and eco mode. What the car will do is because it doesn't have a specific electric mode, it'll tend to not use the petrol engine as much and put you into electric mode when it can. No electric seats or manual, very simple to use. Height adjustment. One thing that Annabelle really likes is the fact that you can adjust the seatbelt height here so it doesn't grotter. Let's see what the clunk's like. Pretty solid. Now the interiors had a refresh as well. So some of the new styling. Also, I am a fan of this insert. It's not going to float everybody's boat. There is a plethora of hard black plastic. The thing is, it makes it robust, easy to clean. But the bottom line is you're not going to be touching that. Well, build quality is good. Pretty much everything you touch has a nice feel to it. Simple to drive. You've got an old school handbrake, hill start assist, auto box and all grip. We get this rotary dial here. Turn it left for snow and right for sport. Put it in auto and it will do as it sees fit. Also, the all grip has been uprated. Comfortable seats. They're supportive. And this part's fabric and this part's leatherette. And I am a fan of this cream stitching. You don't need to go for this interior colour, but to be honest, it's one of my favourites because it combines a dark interior with a light headliner. 
It's a comfortable driving position, reach and rake in the steering wheel. Even with this panoramic, I've still got decent headroom at six foot three. The way that the seat sat reminds me of our Zara Picasso. So you're sat more upright, which yeah, works well with me. I've got a foot rest down here and lots of leg room too. And a padded armrest in the middle. Decent sized windscreen and yeah, the entertainment's not the biggest on the market, but it does everything it needs to. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and you're looking at it thinking, how do you turn up the volume? Well, it's incredibly simple. You just literally do this. Shortcut buttons here, down to the air conditioning. Proper rotaries, switch gear, not bad. Got a USB, 12 volt, extra storage, cup holders, and a decent sized door pocket. Glove box. What is that? Oh, wow. Right, let's take a look in the back. And I almost forgot airbags in the side of the seats and as expected a sunglasses holder. The Vitara has got great proportions and when you look from the back the black two-tone just gives it a rather sinister look and that really appeals. Chunky side skirts too and discs all around. Let's take a look in the back. Door opens nice and wide and once again hard plastics and sadly no armrest but this is of a decent size. Now I do have to duck down a little bit but as far as my legs go I've got a decent bit of room here and I can get my feet under the seat. One thing I have noticed is my hair is brushing but that's the challenges with a panoramic and no it doesn't look as a recline on the seat either. So my advice is get as low in the seat and then it's fine. I'm glad that this is recessed and it's soft because it gives my knees a nice little bit of padding. Decent leg room down here, reduced transmission tunnel which is great to see considering it's got a four-wheel drive system. It's comfortable, it's perfect for two people on the long journey. These are finished nicely. Door cards, yeah to be honest they should have some more padded areas and it would be nice to see them lightened up especially if say you had the urban pack you'd have red accents or matte black accents it's a pity they don't do say a, a premium variant where you got a padded area here like the front and padded here and padded there but the general feel of it inside well it's pretty good it's light and airy you've got lots of light coming in with the panoramic decent leg room and it's a comfortable seat i can see we've got isofix points and curtain side airbags and look, an interior light. Not just one here, but one there. And grab handles above every door. Bar the drivers. This ideally should have been broken up. Vents or even charges. The new Vitara looks far better at the rear. It's chunkier. It's got more definition. Pronounced rear lenses with a unique pattern as well. Black rear spoiler. And I think one of my favorite features, this big chunky rear bumper. Look at that reversing light. You've also got a reversing camera and parking sensors. Keyless entry for the rear too. Just press this to bob your uncle. And then just pop the boot open. On the key fob, there's no boot release, but you could also just press unlock. It's a decent boot size. You'll easily get your shopping in there and a couple of suitcases too so perfect for going on holiday for the family now the interesting thing is as this is a hybrid this is actually a smaller boot because that's where the electric system is decent storage here and here 12 volt socket you've got a boot light on the right hand side look tethering points they are plastic but they are pretty robust lifting up the floor inflation kit there's also extra storage too this props there quite a solid floor and one thing to note this is relatively light do you like a system that makes it easy to pull out a parcel shelf perfect virtually no boot lip and this is reinforced plastic as well dropping the seat extremely easy push this forward and then literally do that and you can do it from here these aren't too heavy either Yeah, it doesn't lay entirely flat, but it's pretty close. And also, very limited gap here. You'll easily get a mountain bike in there. 
Now I have noticed at six foot three, I am close to this. So if you're as tall as me, just be careful. Let's take a look under the bonnet. Releases here, just literally pull. Also, another one. This is where your petrol cap releases. Nice and easy to release. Literally slide your finger in and push left. The good old Jimny engine with the hybrid powertrain. At a glance, you can see it's very easy to top up fluids. You see where your radiator top up is, wipers, etc., etc. Welcome behind the wheel of the new Vitara hybrid. And yes, we do have all grip. So this kind of terrain, absolutely no problem. Same with winter, because we've got snow mode too. Under the bonnet, believe it or not, we've got a 1.5 out of a Jimny. So there's no turbocharger, meaning it's naturally aspirated. And we've got, I think it's a 30 brake horsepower electric motor. This is actually a manual box with automatic features. I know, that's a bit baffling, isn't it? Also get a six speed manual. And in case you're wondering, the mild hybrid uses the 1.4 booster jet engine. Yeah, it's one of our firm favorites. There's no need to charge this as this is a full hybrid. So how this differs to a mild hybrid is it will drop into electric mode periodically. It'll utilize the petrol engine, especially when you're in normal mode and use the electric motor to boost bits. By the way, the way that charges is coasting, and braking and then that puts power back into your battery the system works very well from pull off it's nice and smooth and when you hit this little button here eco mode what it'll try and do is use the electric motor as much as possible making it far more economical now on paper a mild hybrid i think it's about 52 to the gallon and this is something like 53. now i'd suspect it's a fair bit higher because i've been driving around here in my normal spirited fashion and I've been getting 45 pretty much on the nose no matter how I drive now if I go on an eco run it's amazing how fast that climbs so closer to 60 wouldn't surprise me in normal mode it's a different story it tends to use the petrol engine more and the electric motor to boost it the system as a whole works very well the one place you might notice it is if you catch it off guard, say floor your foot, and make a bit of noise, and then because you've changed your driving style, because what it tries to do is look at how you're driving and work out when you're gonna floor it. And that's to do with where the pedal sits and things like that. It's quite clever, but it means if you're like me, you decide to just kick down, it goes, uh, okay, you wanna drop a gear. And then when you back off again, it's like having a sport mode. So it's sat there going, Ur! are you changing gear or are you not? Which means you can catch it off guard, like I say. But if you drive it normally, and even like moderately spirited, it's a pretty good box. I suppose if you're used to CVTs, it's a bit like that. This claims not to 60 in 13 and a half seconds. But to be perfectly frank, I think it's a touch quicker than that. So say 20 to 50 is far quicker than it would be from 0 to 60. Which I think needs to be told because you look at that and think, my word, that's a 0 to 60 from the 1990s. Right, I'm going to kick down now and you can just see that it can pull. I mean, that's 40. Yes, it's an SUV, so we do get body roll, but it's not excessive and it can be quite agile and nimble on the back road. Yes, you're not going to take it into an S-band at some like ridiculous speed because it will lean and wallow a bit. But generally, pretty good. The ride's pretty comfortable. As you know, the roads around Silverdale aren't the greatest. So it gobbles up potholes with absolutely no problem. Yeah, no excessive bangs. And it gives the driver and the passenger a comfortable ride. Huh? The steering's pretty good. It weightens up when it needs to. It's nice and light when you're maneuvering and it gives good feedback. The combo just works, suspension, brakes and steering. And you've got fantastic visibility, haven't you? You have, and we've got blind spot detection too. Also looking out the back window, decent size, so it's easy to maneuver. The overwatch on this as standard is really good, isn't it? I mean, for a start, you've got dual brake support. You've also got AEB, 
collision detection and a whole list of other things. On RSZ5 we've also got rear cross traffic alert. Turning circle, not bad. That's it, it's profile is pretty good and its dimensions aren't too wide so on back lanes you're not going to have any trouble with it. I can zoom down these with absolutely no problem. It does scrub a little bit of speed off but it's not enough to class as say braking but you will notice it. The cluster is really clear on the left hand side you've got a rev counter and on the right hand side you can see your speedo. In the center a small computer you see your average economy if you go through the modes you can also see like a graph and it shows you where you're being economical. It's a perfect family vehicle to be honest. It's practical, it handles, it's got enough power and it's economical. Thank you for joining us. Until the next time.